All right, Danger Zone, we got a crazy interview for you today. We're going to be talking to Mr. Marcus Conti. That's right, Marcus Conti. Let's just get this thing going. going on folks so we're gonna have an interesting interview for you guys today uh i'm gonna have a guy named marcus conti on the line i have him already up and ready to go so we're just gonna go ahead and pull him in how's it going mr conti how you doing today the fango i'm doing good man how you doing all right i'm doing all right doing all right just another fine day in larpa dice or whatever we're gonna call it yeah. this is larp line uh oh uh oh, uh -oh. Yeah. You're not the heavy guns. The heavy guns are coming in. Watch out, man. Uh, hey, Defango. What's up? Are you home? No. Are you homo? No, 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 not homo. You know, maybe just a little black because I kissed a dude one time, so that's a joke that I like to say. But that other than that, count. no. That uh, doesn't count, can... apparently. That's what all my friends told me. I mean, whatever. The... And what were you, like seven years old? Years no, old? no, no, no. no. I, was, I was like 18. No. So, you know, it's whatever. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Yeah, I figured that would probably be one of the first things. So I heard you went to the Gay Pride Parade? I did. I went to the Gay Pride Parade. I used to live in a village, man. I used to work around I used to work around a lot of gays, man. I love that shit, man. Oh, well, I that's went to cool. Gay Pride. Hey, listen, man. That's like Gay Pride is uh, the way I see it. It's kind of like going to a going to a black rally or a protest or a I mean, it's got a lot of pride, man. It's one of the best best parades, man. You know, you don't have to be you don't have to be gay to, to see the, you know, the pride. You know, people were oppressed for, for a lot of years, a lot of abuse, a lot of a lot of uh, misunderstanding. And, you know, and fucking now they're free. Now they're like, you know, they can they can be who they are. They're not sinners, man. They're just it's just it's natural. It's natural. It's homosexual plants. And, you know, man, it just happens. So, so I, I, I agree. I, I, got, I got a lot of friends in the homosexual variety, you know, like I totally like what they were doing i mean i followed the gay rights thing for a really long time and honestly i don't have too many problems with that although the the weird shit with like that desmond kid and you know some of that other stuff where the the p files or the maps minor attracted persons are trying to infiltrate and put themselves in with the pride movement and that's something that i'm just like i can't get down with that so how have you confirmed that i'm uh, i'm gay Oh, well, because you went to the Pride Movement. You went to the Pride Parade. Okay. You're always yeah. talking about sticking stuff and up, up people's asses. I mean, I definitely <laughs> yeah, heard you I talking did. about shoving uh, putters and other kinds of stuff in people's yeah. butts. And okay. all the gay people I know are always, like, saying that, you know, they're putting stuff in butts. So, you know, like, okay. I guess you could see how that, you know, would – that's at least three okay, so, different so likely putter, outcomes right there. Put, putter up someone's ass, went to the gay Pride Parade. That's two pieces of – that's two pieces of circumstantial evidence. What's your, what else? Oh, the that? third piece of circumstantial evidence was mm -hmm. uh, all the talk about gayness with the George Webb thing. I thought that you might have felt left <laughs> out. <laughs> no, it, well, listen, there was there was credible evidence. There was credible evidence that that Jason f fucked George's ass. Uh, really? the, I'm sorry, the, the opposite, that George fucked Jason's ass. And that was very credible. I mean, someone actually you know, told me that. You know somebody saying? told you that? So it was credible that way? I mean, somebody told me that you were gay, and, uh, you know, you're telling me that you're no, not. No, but this, so. is, this, is, this is a little more close to the fire. Someone, it was like a hush whisper that someone knew him. And then it, it, and it then I said, okay, well, then there's, there is more circumstantial evidence. Because, because oh, well, you also said that I live in Chelsea. I don't live in Chelsea. Dude. Now, where do you I live? live? In, I, I live in Brooklyn. It's, oh. it's I'm, I'm close to, I'm close to Chelsea. I live in but it's, it's actually it's New York City, but I don't live in. I I spend time there. I spend time in Manhattan a lot. I used to live there. I still have friends, you know. But uh, but but yeah. So did you? I don't know, man. It's just it's just funny, you know. Gay is gay is funny. Is Jason is Jason a homo? Did George jerk off on Jason's couch? And did, did all this stuff happen, man? It's just like it's just really heavy. You know what I'm saying? It's just disturbing, really. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like Jason Goodman's a LARPer? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of curious. Why bring me on? I'm really I felt I, here's my position, right? Let's we'll get serious. I this my position in this whole thing is I see myself as a, a kind of a referee. Right? I was sidelined. I don't I don't I'm no friends with Jason Goodman or 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 George Webb, and I certainly Taking don't notes. watch. 
I certainly don't watch uh, Dave act and eat. And, uh, you know, and the rest of the clowns, I don't really, you know, you're, you're Thomas Schoenberger guy. This guy's off the, off the fucking rails, man. You got to watch this guy <laughs> right already. I mean, I made that assessment very quickly, very quickly that, 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 that's a, that's a shady character. But I, I mean, I see myself as a, a referee. I came off the sidelines because the, the, the LARPing thing is, is I'm just curious. I mean, I, I'm curious. I think that, that the Q thing is, is I you know disturbing? I think it's a giant rabbit hole. I think it's completely, utterly, and one hundred percent fake. And and so what? But when you know with with this uh, with this other thing with you now we're talking about. Excuse me. There's a connection to the Seth Rich murder mystery, and there's also um, the element of lawsuit. Dave, Dave act creepy Dave with the fucking Mr. Lawsuit, right? Dave act in lawsuit, right? That's that's a little disturbing. When people start suing each other, or in the case of Jen Moore, people start dying, or with you know, in the case of George Webby, he, he can't even hold the he's he's going, man. He can't even he can't even hold the camera straight, man. He's going. He's right? he's he's just drinking himself to death, and that that sort of thing is. Um, it gets me off the sidelines. Like that kind of makes sense. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a referee. I'm nobody, but I'm somebody. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure it out and and broadcast it so that other people, uh, or that or that Isaac Cappy guy. I don't know much about that story, and I, I really, I don't see it as that important. But it's just another casualty in the law war, right? That's when it. That's when it. It or the QAnon killer guy, Anthony Camillo, who shot the Gambino crime boss. Uh, Frankie Cali. Now that's that's heavy. Why is the kid got the cue on his hand, right? What is what's so inspiring about this particular LARP? Because it's a LARP, it's a live action role play. It's all fake. I, I don't think what you do is fake. I I don't think what you're a, a you you qualify as as the LARPer or at all, really. I think that um, it's just fun to call you a LARPer. You know, it's just fun. Like it's, yeah, it triggers me a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. But what's the, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the, what is a LARPer? Am I a LARPer? I mean, you could say I'm pretending to be Wayne's World, right? That's what everybody says. I'm Wayne's World. I'm the guy in fucking Slapstick. You, wait, slap you're not guy. fucking, I'm, you're not Wayne's World, bro? Because that's the I'm, only reason I thought you were, I was having you on the show. I'm, I'm Bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, right? There's humor to that, right? I love Wayne's World, man. It's fucking, I do. I like to do. Yeah, like it's real. My hair is real. My teeth are real. The glasses are definitely real because I won't be able to see you without them. You know, it's all real, man. I'm I'm a real, I'm a goofball, yeah. You know, and uh, but three years ago I was, a, you know, a cop with shaving head and all that shit. You were a cop three years ago. I was a sanitation uh, enforcement agent. Sorry, cop. I, a, I was a garbage cop, garbage police, and uh, you wore a uniform. It was a, it was a uniformed uh, law enforcement uh, job, and uh, yes, I did. Man. I didn't like it very much, and they certainly didn't like me very much. And, uh, so you, you got know, the hell out of there, huh? So you I technically got, I, you have you actually have the ability to have service in the LARP war because you were actually a garbage cop, and yeah. this whole thing is garbage. So like, I actually see that now. I understand why you're trying to police this uh th this Michigash, and I just say that word because uh, somebody told it to me one time, and I think it's still funny. You know, you know what, you know what my my uh, thing is. I'll tell you the thing, all right? I, I I'm a fan of yours. I watched you back with when you did the whole uh, Seth Rich, uh, who spoofed the Seth Rich file. I, to me, I thought it was a joke. It was, you know, you could you can vow up and down that somehow you guys are all connected to Mossad and CIA and all that bullshit. All right, but the fact is, it was it was a very funny story. It was it was hysterical because Seth Rich file had already leaked a year before. No, I'm not. I'm not gay. I'll say it again, man. No, I know. Me. I said you're not gay. I'm just. These are my notes. Okay. These are my notes from the show. So like, I'm just writing oh. all this stuff down so that we have it for later. If I were gay, man, I'd tell you, bro. I'd be like, come on, man. You now easy it would be to be gay too, right? Like I have camaraderie with you. I could hit it off with you in a second. But you put a woman in there. It's like fucking. It's like an arm wrestle. Right? You know what I'm saying. I know. I guess I get it. I get it. 
I get it. Yeah. yeah, I'm just like I said, I'm just taking notes as we're sitting here talking, trying to make sure that we have everything in there. Because you know, I actually do like your content. I've liked like what you were doing with George Webb. You know, like I felt like that was actually some pretty important work. Like you were the only guy that was actually going and doing all the things to figure out what happened with that. And yeah. I mean, even then, there was still a lot of an- oh, there's a lot more. I have a questions, but you know, we know Lady died and. We really, really, really don't know why, and I mean, you brought up the QAnon stuff, and that right there is, you know, hits me pretty close to home because, like, I've been watching all of this madness, is what I call it, is madness, because you know, everybody may or may not believe what I said I did over at DefCon, but you know, like, I'm gonna stick to that fact because it's what I did, it's what it happened, and you know what, I never expected for things to get into the area it was, but you know, I wanted to see these other characters, you know, like the TSs of the world and whatnot, and I wanted to really see what their breath was and i like all this time that they spent trying to use the white rabbit and all this other crap for their puzzle that was happening just after defcon and how it started overlapping with all the QAnon stuff was strange to the outside observer but it wasn't strange to me because i told these people about it and you know like i was watching them effectively you know like manipulate and neuter the minds of people all across the world but you know like they took it away from being such a difficult puzzle and they made it into something that was so different i mean all i did was really come up with like ideas and accoutrement and even to this day people aren't going to give me my due in the thing i mean every article that ever comes out they only ever care about one character and that's microchip because nobody ca- everybody wants to know who he is nobody knows who he is you know, nobody gives a shit about knowing who I am because everybody can go online and see exactly who I am and just be like, yeah, fucking fuck this jerk off. And, you know, like, I feel like that was what it was for because, you know, like I'm that random little oddity that's been out there. But I've been sitting very clearly, you know, taking notes, making videos and trying to really follow along with all these people. That's why I guys got guys like Dustin Nemos to try to come on my show because, you know, regardless of whatever these people out there think about him, I still need to have a conversation with them because, you know, like you got to feel people out sometimes. And I mean, that's what we're doing here with you is because I know you're a good guy. I know that you're just like up to, you know, do what you're doing. I was just, you know, making fun of you because, you know, that's what you do. That's what you do when you get a tablet, right? You just like fuck around, you know, like fuck around and find out, right? So, exactly. especially when you're by yourself, right? When you're doing it, when you're doing the shit by yourself, you tend to, uh, you tend to go overboard in your own head. But when there's somebody like now, I'm sitting in front of you, man. Call guy, call me a homo. Hey, give me a kiss. <laughs> you homo. <laughs> so, so I just kissed the finger. Right? So now, yeah, now like every, be, everybody's going to be talking shit online. You know, gonna be like, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, the all the stuff that you just rattled off. I don't, I don't, I don't really know these players because it really doesn't it doesn't uh i don't want to say it doesn't interest me but i i say this about q who is who is posting who is posting who has the ability the you know the the language that they use is not that sophisticated it's it's like one part psychic and one part you know very very remedial basic news oh trump did this and now we have to watch for that it's anybody, any idiot with the Wall Street Journal in front of them can can follow, you know, follow the narrative per se. But who is doing it, right? I mean, you had, I mean, I, I wrote a list. These are the people that fell for it, right? Now, I don't know if they're if they're real or LARPers or they're paid or whatever you want to call them. But Jordan Stater, you've got Seething Frog, Lionel Nation bought it, swallowed it completely. Jerome Corsi, Praying Medic, J- Tracy Beams, Amazing Polly. And those are the only ones that that come on to my, you know into my radar. But there's so many people, right? That's how many how many a hundred thousand, you know, half a million people follow these 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 knuckleheads, right? And are are swallowing this, you know, this uh, this dumpster of crap, right? Now is it there's what there's another side of Q that you could say well it educated people. It woke it woke people up to certain political positions that they may not have seen, but it's all designed. It's all pointing towards a conspiracy that will never happen, which is locking up very powerful people like Hillary Clinton and Comey. Right? People don't realize, like a, the director of the FBI or the or an ex president of the United States is so immune, like Bill Clinton. Or Hillary Clinton, the former first lady. Do you know? Do you know what it would take? It would take nothing short 
of a of a gunshot, so a picture of her shooting someone, you know, to to ever even get her in the court. Right? And people don't realize that. They think, oh no, she's gonna they're gonna lock her up. When Trump leaves office, he's gonna get locked up. Trump is 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 bulletproof, you know, to the day he dies, right? Secret service, you know, and so so it it, it it's what it is, a copium. It's it's um it creates a false hope. And then it takes people off the off the political, uh, uh, you know, uh, the stuff that's going on politically that they should be looking at. Like, hey, you don't have health care. Hey, you don't have a job. Hey, uh, you, you're, you're strapped in debt. You're, you're, you know, you're living paycheck to paycheck. You know, you don't have four hundred dollars to your name. Right. Don't look at that. Look at the fact that Q is going to come in on a white horse and save the day. Right? So. And there's nothing. Look, there's nothing wrong with it. It's it's like a it's like a fairy tale. It's like it's like um, you know it's a sci-fi. It's a comic book. It's it's a story, right? But some people believe it's true, you know, and and most people that follow it believe it's true. And and then and their lies destructive. Is it is it criminal? Is it? I don't think so. No, it's it's freedom of speech. It's people are free to believe it. If you want to say Q should be, you know, demonized, then so pile up all the religions on top of Q because it's the same thing. You know, it's it's hopium. It's it's blind faith. But when someone turns to murdering people and and reading Q on his hand or or, in the, you know, in the in other cases, right, I don't I can't think of any right now, but any other situations where somebody dies or. Or uh, someone's, you know, someone's out there stealing their money. That's when you cross over the line, you know. That's 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 the only thing that concerns me with this whole, uh, the extension of this Russia Gate, which, for whatever reason, they threw you right in the fire. They put you right in the middle of it. Right? You got, you getting you getting legal papers now, and someone's someone's messing with you, and um, you know. So that's that's where it, it you know, is there going to be legal precedents to this? No, this is. It's frivolous. I read your case. I read the Aaron Rich versus uh, Ed Dutowski thing. I, I read it. I, it. It's it's debunked in the first on the first page, in, in my view. I'm doing all the talking. Go ahead, man. Talk. No, no, no. That's fine. I mean, you know, I'm here to listen and you know really see what you're trying to say. And I'm also taking notes, like I said, because that's what I got this tablet for. And I think that you're right. Like when I got put into this case, like I didn't want any part of this case, but I knew that. I knew a long time ago that somebody was going to try to utilize this shit against me. And, you know, like, honestly, this is what, my let, battle. Let me stop you. What shit are you talking about? What shit? How are you involved in this in this lawsuit? I still don't see it. I, I mean, what? You were involved in a business, a Black Rock with, with, with some Thomas, whatever the fuck his name is. And you, you had some kind of thing going. But what does that have to do with? What does that have to do with the Aaron Rich uh suing ed Batowski and and uh matt couch what is it what do you have to do with any of that Just well i think me. the only reason i have anything to do with it is because mr showing us your burgers decided that he was going to reach out to the aaron rich law firm and offer testimony on whatever i don't know what he's actually testifying to so but... he so so stop right there so Schoenberger dragged you into it through something that he said to their lawyers and then their lawyers then issued a a subpoena. subpoena for you to appear. Now that's voluntary, by the way. You know, don't you know if unless it's compelled by a judge. Hold on. It's compelled by a judge. Was it? Was it? It was signed by a judge. Um, on, the, what's it called? The one that I'm getting right now. I got a voluntary subpoena now, but yeah, they like went through the paperwork and got it from the judge. Uh, if I don't move, if I don't fix that, I'm going to choke. <laughs> oh no worries. <laughs> I roll. I roll my wheels. No, if if so, uh, so back up. So a you said a judge, a judge signed the subpoena. Is that what happened? A judge mm-hmm. signed the subpoena. Yeah, the judge signed the subpoena from what I'm considered to be, and then my deposition date's going to be on seven thirty one of this month. So uh, I already provided like electronic means and materials, and I've been just like throwing in every single bit of Hold information I can. Hold on a second. Can you uh, you have the you have the subpoena? You they they presented it to you, and and what is what exactly 
because this is important, right? It is is it stamped by the judge? Is it signed by the clerk? What what is what's no because actually the one that they sent me wasn't signed by the clerk. Okay, so so it's not signed. What it what this is what it is. It's a lawyer. I'm no lawyer, but I've been I've been I didn't finish my story before. Is that what what happened was with where I was working with the Department of Sanitation? Is I be I was a whistleblower. I mean a real whistleblower where I blew the whistle on a on an illegal ticket quota that had been going on for 30 years in New York City. And I recorded it. I I, I provided the court with that with real evidence, 22 minute manifesto. You know, so so I have been in in legal battles. I've been pro se the whole time. In fact, here it is. Right? I actually got a document of it. Right? So mm -hmm. it, it's just my scrap paper. It's just funny that I happen to have it with me, right? I, yeah, I'll dox myself. Right? Oh wow, you just dox yourself right there. Yeah, dude. I just dox myself. Well, there when I'm know. in when I'm in New York next month, uh, I'll, I'll come okay. by. You know why I dox myself? Because it's already been done. I was this whole thing was public. Right, I don't. I make no no qualms about where I live. You want to come up? I got something for you. Right, it's not it's not a big deal. Right, it's New York. Right, I I know to, I know to take care of myself. The point is, I was what was I trying to make? The point is that is that the subpoena. That's what I was trying to say. The subpoena. Listen to me. Follow my thought. I know what I'm talking about. The subpoena. This is how you get these guys. Right, you get them off your back. Subpoena is voluntary. Mm -hmm. right? Subpoena by the court. Lawyers can subpoena anybody. As a pro se client, you cannot subpoena anybody. You have to get the judge or the clerk to 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 sign. Right? You can't you can't subpoena someone as a pro se litigant. But the but the you can present it to the judge, and they'll almost always sign it if it's compelling. But lawyers can subpoena you, so you have been subpoenaed by the lawyers. But that doesn't mean you can. It's still voluntary. You could say fuck you. I don't have anything, and and the judge can then say, "Hmm, is this compelling enough?" He'll they look at it, and then they could they can hold you in contempt if you don't show up. But mm -hmm. that's that's all the way down the road. You could still tell him, "Go fuck yourself." I'm not, you know, this is bullshit. Blah blah blah. Or you could walk in and just say it. This is all bullshit. Fifth Fifth Amendment. I, I don't have anything to add. You could do that too, as that could be your testimony. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, um, I talked to a lawyer on this thing, and they were just like, I mean. He's yeah. like, they're like, you don't really have to give anything up, but they're no. like, in your, in the, the, like with your entire situation as it goes right now, you might as well just go give them everything because I mean, right now I'm at no loss and no fault for any of this stuff. So I'm fine with it. You know, like, okay, if I, you want to get me my testimony and know what no. happened in this meeting like, and all that that's stuff, like, fine. That's like someone saying, uh, I want to give you a, a, you know, a proctology examination because I feel like it. it's like. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, bend over. I wanna, I wanna see what's up there. You know, I wanna, I wanna. See, that's it's a violation, right? That's what the, that's the nature, that's the nature of of what uh, what you what you're under. It seems like you're it your is a violation. Scumbag, your scumbag friend, who you once was friends with, Mr. Schoenberger, has has thrown you into the loop, has has made some kind of deal with the with the lawyers over there as a as a kind of a snitch of some sort. And something you said, he's he's using that to drag you into the fire. And what is his motive, right? Well, I could tell you what his motive is because if you do another five minute search, right, you go like I found, you know, scam alert, Thomas Schoenberger, right, exposed, mm -hmm. right. This this guy's a this guy's a a a, a creep, an L.A. kind of, you know, creepy creepy like you know predator kind of guy, right? He's a fucking scumbag, right? And that's that's quick, and I don't care who who you you know fucking fuck you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know this guy, and and he's got he's got already fifty emails at me like he thinks I'm a fifteen year old kid, right? And I'm just gonna keep blowing him up, right? Fucking, you know what? It's even, it's 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 so ridiculous because the only reason the only reason I engaged him is because you guys kept talking about him. I I mean I got thick skin. I would have ignored him, you know. You could send a hundred emails; it doesn't matter, right? But I, I engaged him because because you mentioned his name. Um, who else? Uh, uh, Lift the veil mentioned his name. His name kept popping up. How does this guy's name keep popping up? And you're saying you you had once had a a working relationship with him and a big picture. None of this really matters to me. I just got sucked into it as a referee kind of thing, and. 
and I'm not, I'm not in, obviously not involved in it in any way, but but it is it, it only interests me because it, it it interests me because Aaron Rich's position in this is that he is Seth Rich's brother, and that they're creating this defamation case against two people that disputed the the, the official narrative, which is that Russia was somehow involved in hacking the Democratic election, right? So it, the, the, the chain of command is clear. It comes from DNC operatives. The motive to to make the Seth Rich case, and I know we had, when I talked to you the first time, I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of background on the second part of the story. Mm-hmm. And I kind of sounded stupid, but, the, but now I, I understand the second part of the story, but the first part of the story doesn't change. And you disagreed with me. I saw the video you made after that. You you disagreed. I don't know what I'm talking about. You don't agree with my my position, but this it's un, it's undeniable, right? The, the source of the the source of the suppression is to make sure that the Seth Rich story doesn't doesn't uh, you know manifest into something real, right? That 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 there is no investigation. That maybe there really wasn't any murder. That there is no ballistics. That there is no body. That there is no there's no photographs. There's no bullet. There's no gun. There's no vic. There's no. Um, there's no uh, suspect. Two years later, there's no suspect. Right? It's the whole thing is is very suspicious. Julian Assange locked up. Ha, you know, quiet the guy. Quiet down the publisher. Right. So so the so the where it's coming from is. Is uh is the mo the motive from where it's coming from the DNC operatives the Seth Rich camp the DNC camp is is not that mysterious and not and not and it's not that surprising that they come at you some so heavily. What is what is interesting is why this why this Schoenberger is trying to throw you under the bus, right? Like why, you know, you know I, I understand trying to control the narrative. I've been you know pr- approached and attacked like that, trying to get people. Trying to get me to pitch their bullshit stories, right? And 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 I just I'm just not for sale in in that way. I mean, listen, if somebody if somebody wants to hire me and you know give me a couple hundred grand, I might be interested in doing that. But I tell you, in telling the truth, no one's really fucking interested in 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 that truth. They're interested in a in a suit and tie that can read off the teleprompter. And if you're not if you're not that, they don't really need you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They so, definitely don't need you. No, they don't need you. They, they get their own guy, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's so, the issue that I've been having. I mean, do you want to know about what's going on with Schoenberger and what I think it is? Okay, go ahead, yeah. So when I started in with this guy, you know, like he was trying to get me onto this uh, thing with a – which you would call a puzzle, right? The Cicada 3301 thing, which he vehemently has denied that he's a part of and then also says that he's the creator of la 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 la. Um, after I decided to like kind of out this thing because we were working in Texas, this guy kept on offering illegal services, saying that he could do things that he couldn't do, and so on and so forth. You know, like when I first got interacted with them and they were working on with, I guess Ed. I was looking at my emails and yeah, they were sending me stuff in like August of twenty, I think it's like twenty eighteen or twenty seventeen, uh-huh. and. Even then, like, the entire time that any of this stuff is going on, like, when they started doing work for him and everything, I was live streaming on vacation, going and doing whatever, and I had been sending money from Beth to, you know, secure me to be working when I got back. So once I started working with these guys, like, it was pretty quick, man. Like, I got flown to Texas to meet with all these fucking people. Thomas Schoenberger basically offers me up for, like, illegal shit, says that I'll hack some people. I'm like, hell nah. I mean, like, what the fuck are you even doing right Mm. now? Are you trying to throw me under the bus? And after this situation, you know, like, I kind of broke off from Thomas completely, and I was just like, I don't know, man. This seems pretty weird. You know, they were saying that they were going to be doing something with the movie, and there was he was making me a lot of promises that he couldn't keep, and people kept on delivering me more and more information about him. So I was like, all right, well, I was like, he seems like a bad guy, but he seems to be telling me that he's going to be trying to change everything. You know, he's saying that he's, you know, on a new leaf and he's really trying to do something good for people. So, you know, like, fuck it. I believed him. And Mm -hmm. when I went to uh, 
Texas for the second time with Batowski, like for this actual like situation to live with the guy, like we had only had like two clients. We had Ed and Bo Deedle, basically. And I had to do all the work for the Bo Deedle campaign. Me and Trevor did. And after that campaign, Trevor was out of the company and it was supposedly just that me and the, Thomas. The New York mayor, Bo Deedle, B Diddley, whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, Bo Deedle. He was running for mayor. Yeah, that guy. Okay. So I made a couple uh, TV commercials for him, did some research, you know, kind of found out who was going, you know, who was trolling the shit out of his people on Twitter. And then I went and got their accounts banned because, you know, they were posting like nasty shit on there. So it was pretty easy to just, you know, report them. But, you know, I was just basically stopping the trolls from fucking with him. And if there would be like a troll out there that was on it, we would just figure out if it was a real regular person or if it was a troll account. If it was a troll account, you know, we would just... You know, block and he, them and report you were the being, tweets. You were, pay, you were being paid for the service, right? That you were hired as talent. You were paid for it. Were you paid a lot of money? Did you get your well, money? Well, for this one, um, that for this service, I didn't really get all of my money. Thomas basically took all of the money from this encounter. And then when I did get paid, I only got paid like peanuts compared to what I was supposed to be getting paid on it. And on the top of that, uh, the, another person that Did was associated with the country, Did that was the thing. Contract? We didn't have a contract. I wrote the contracts for the Bo Deedle stuff and what we were supposed to do with them. And then Thomas was the one that was making all the deals and stuff and taking all the money. So like there was a business contract between Shadowbox and them, but like I don't have a contract between me and Thomas for the amount of money to pay. It was supposed to be just an agreement. And, you know, he shuffled all the money into his directly into his main bank account. Like, didn't and even you put were it living, you were living with Schoenberger. You were living yeah. with Schoenberger or, or, or Picasso? Uh, I was living. We were living out of like a hotel. It was like a Marriott. And when we were living out there in that Marriott, that's when we found out. Or like we were living there for about sixty days. Sorry, I got a lot of stuff going on in my head right now. Oh, thanks you for all the ice creams and lemons and diamonds, everybody. Um, we're doing an interview with uh, Mr. Marcus Conte. Sorry if I'm not getting to every single one of you, but apologize about that. Uh, when I went to Texas, it wasn't even until February, and that was when Ed was like, okay, well, I want you guys to come out here. We need to actually build a business. I'm going to, you know, help you guys, like, consult with you guys on what you need to do and then, you know, help you get some clients. So that's what we went to Texas for is, like, the business is already up and over after the Deedle campaign because of all of the lies that Thomas was telling them about what he could do on uh, Twitter, saying, like, oh, I could, you know, get you guys a bunch of likes and all this stuff. And, I mean, he was just buying shit off off of SEO clerks and other websites like that. So like these guys knew they had found out about him and they didn't even have him come to New York City to see us. They brought me and Trevor in and we're like, you guys need to fix this. And if you guys don't fix this, we gonna have a problem. So after that situation, I was like, OK, well, I'm going to leave this guy alone. And then he kept on trying to hit me up and butter me up on this one saying, oh, we're going to get paid. We're going to get money, all the emails and stuff that I all put right. out. So I get, I get the gist of it. So Thomas rips you off. You did, you're working for him. You don't get paid. Let me, let me read some stuff to you. This is what I found. All right, so Thomas Schoenberger has lots of excuses. In Contra Costa Courthouse, there is a document that shows Thomas Schoenberger giving testimony that he sold North Bay Entertainment in 2007 when, in fact, he operated till 2009. Now, I don't, I don't know the validity of this document. I'm just reading off of something called... Um, uh, it's like a scam alert of some sort. So we'll find out if it's true. Thomas Schoenberger has had a long term partnership agreement with someone Jeff called Stephen Leflar since 2008. That includes an eighteen thousand includes an eighteen thousand dollars to Schoenberger in 2004, and Stephen Leflar is still owed six thousand. Right? and it goes on and on. Schoenberger uh, still uh, he worked had a company AEC. Still owes well in excess of two two hundred thousand dollars to musicians and artists. He owes uh, Stephen Leflar a total of two hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. He's been accused of cyber stalking the two of them. Yep, he, that's all. He, that's actually right? all real. Right, it's all real stuff. He's also. But then you go on his own site, and Mr. Schoenberger is a polymath composer, historian, right? He's, a, he's, he's He claims he's he's played in the Moscow Chamber Orchestra, you know, and, and it also says in that article that he ripped off two dozen bands 
right? Two thousand two dozen bands that he took under their wing. It's like it's like a it's like a um, it's like a like a booking agent or a, or a corrupt record label where he's trying to where he tries to corral the talent and then rip them off. Pretty now, much. In, Right, that's what he is. You want to hear his music? Here's his music. Right? No, I mean it? I've heard I've heard his music. I don't want you to play it on my stream because they'll probably try to strike it because of it. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I know I know all a lot about this stuff, and I mean that's not even everything. If you actually right. go look up his background report, which I've done, and you know, like once I did that, like just before we actually you know started working together, like I I forwarded all this stuff over to Ed in the beginning, and I was like, dude, I don't really know how I'm supposed to get out of this situation. You know, we need bigger. You don't have a contract. You, you know, without that's why when you're dealing with a shady guy like this, you got to get the contract, and then once he doesn't pay you, you don't even talk to him anymore. Go right to well, court. That's and what I did. Pull it out of his bank account. Well, that's the thing is, what I did was, is I was making all of the contracts and stuff like that. So, like, when I was making all the contracts and stuff like that, you know, like I was very direct with him, like, hey, if you don't pay this amount, if this doesn't come through, you know, like I'm not doing this work. I get, I see the picture. So he's he's trying to fuck you over because you he owe you owe he owes you money, and he's trying to put you in your place so you so you don't get your money. And he, you're still his bitch, and you're gonna do what he tells you to do. That sort of situation. It, it's kind of obvious, right? It's kind of, I mean, you know, this is a guy you, you smack him off the side of the head, really. But, but, um, yeah, it's it's a shame. I mean, you know, I'm uh, again, I'm no, I'm no lawyer, but it does. I, I got a good bullshit detector, and that's that's all I see, really. I don't see it as it's not illegal, really. You know, because in a court, he's you're gonna say, you're gonna say he owes you this money. He's gonna say he doesn't owe you anything, and nobody has a piece of paper to show the judge. I do. And does, does you do? And it's I all been, you know. it's been all been it's all I've been I've provided all pieces of paper and documentation to the lawyers in the shadow box thing that shows everything, all the contracts, everything that we put out, every single email, every single document associated to anything, Shadowbox, Thomas Schoenberger, the Aaron Rich case. So like I gave them an overabundance of information and then I've also been providing them with all of the alt accounts and other accounts that he was using during that time because I figured that he probably wasn't going to give them up, which is according to the lawyers since they've been going all over this thing, they're like, uh, well, we got his depositions finally and uh, we can already, you know, like they got his depositions finally and I'm pretty sure that they could already tell that he basically was bullshitting them in a lot of ways. And thanks to 50318 for the 999 through Super Chat. I appreciate you, man. Um, literally he was pissed off at me because he thought that i ruined everything for him because shadow box basically was away i fucking abandoned him i was just like dude i'm not doing any more work i'm going back to arizona this has been the most unproductive two months of my life yeah, it's because a failed, you know, it's a failed idea it's a failed project mm -hmm. it made him a couple of dollars in, on two projects yeah well no mm -hmm. and then it made him a little bit more money because he was still trying to sell the business after the llc or after the business license was shut down by one of the people that person that actually Actually bought it he was still trying to run the business after that and taking money from people and he was trying to tell people that I was still involved with it and all these other people are involved in it when we most certainly were not and on top of this stuff he tells me the story that oh well the story is right now that he started it in 2017 with me and another person but I got emails that say I got emails and messages from him that say that he started it in 2013 and yeah. then I have another one from him where he says that he started it in 2016 okay. so he's he's this guy is make, giving me a stomach ache he's a he's a shady character he's obviously trying to He's obviously trying to to put you in your place because you know too much. You know the whole story. You know the truth. And he's just going to try to paint you out to be a liar so that he can continue to make his headway, try to round up the talent. Look at the people he's, he's a pro. Why, why, is he, why is he trying to strong arm someone like me? I'm just a reporter. I'm just a guy poking around. The chances of me ever siding with a, with a sleaze bag like that is, is you know, is, is impossible, right? It's like... You know what I mean? Like, but 
So, I mean, drop him. So what about, I feel like I'm interviewing you. You should, you're supposed to be interviewing me. Before. Well, it, it, this is supposed to be a versus debate or interview or whatever. See, my interviews don't go like that. I just talk to people about what they want to know because generally people want to know stuff for me. You know, like I know about you, what's going on, but you really wanted to know about more of this stuff. So I figured giving yeah. you an open yeah. what ability about, to ask. What about, what, what about tell, tell me about David Acton. All right, so Dave Acton spent all these years – bashing the shit out of his brother day in, day out, making stupid videos about his brother, and then deleting them or making them private so you can't see him anymore, right? Over and over again. But now he seems to have switched gears to, you know, to you. Why, why is, what is his, what is his reason for smearing you with his big conspiracy, the big conspiracy that every, everything is a conspiracy to commit some kind of, high crime and misdemeanor why why uh why is he what's his allegation against you right because I, I again i don't see i think that i'll just back up with the aaron rich case and i'll leave it alone is that the allegation against you is to drag you into the fire to somehow again the, the motivation of the dnc is to quiet voices like you down quiet down ed Batowski. Anybody that talks about Seth Rich, get some kind of compromising shit on him, right? We got the lawyers. Just just say, so come in, say something, say he did something. We'll get a subpoena. We'll drag him and we'll, we'll, we'll scare them into oblivion. That, that part of it is whether you believe me or not and my perspective, I could tell you that's 100% what's going on. And somewhere, some, somewhere, that Schoenberger guy took something from those guys. I got some kind of promise from them. They gave him some kind of promise. Say, hey, go, go, start rounding up these jerk offs. Start trying to, you know, hold them down and and control their narrative. God damn it, we're going into an election year. We can't be talking about oh, Seth Rich, I, and that is the big picture, whether you believe it or not. I, mm -hmm. That's my view. That's my. Uh, but I, but so why is why is Atkin act act fucking acting, Dave? Hey, hi, this is Dave. Why is Dave so interested in smearing you? What is that all about? I think that that's all associated with Jason Goodman. I can't hear you, man. I think that's all associated with Jason Goodman. Um, I told Jason Goodman a while back uh, on my channel, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to Jason Goodman and just kind of clear the air because I was already preparing all of my things because I had caught – I, somebody told me through the grapevine, little bird told me that somebody was going to be pulling all this Aaron Rich shit. And I even made videos where I was like, yeah, the Seth Rich stuff's probably going to be coming up again here pretty soon. Don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to have to. And from that point, I was just like looking through all my emails and shit. And I just reached out to Jason Goodman and I was just like, hey, I'm just going to send you everything that I have because I think it's important because I do believe that there's some weirdness going on. And it was all driven from this lawyer guy, you know, as soon as I got the subpoena from the lawyers, like somebody had sent me a copy of the subpoena. I was just like, what the fuck? You know, like who's doing this? What's going on? So I started looking through my emails and stuff. And then I was like, you know what? If I'm going to have to put all this stuff out into court anyway, I'm going to give everybody everything that they want, including Jason Goodman. Because, you know, I didn't sue him for a reason because the lawsuit that my supposed lawyer wanted me to sue him with was crap. And then I didn't want to sue him anyway. I'm just like, dude, am I really going to sue some fucking guy for talking shit about me on the internet? Am I a little bitch like that? No. No, I'm not. So I dealt with whatever Jason was saying about me, and I just kind of was like, hey, I have – information i was like i don't know if it's going to be helpful to you in your specific case because i only knew that he had a case with uh um robert david Steele. i had no idea that robert i didn't even know that dave was suing him till like much later i was like wait what dave's suing him too i didn't know that shit like are you kidding me so yeah. i said here jason i'm willing to give you any emails with your name in it or anything like that because you know like i'm feeling generous to everybody because if i'm going to get taken down and i'm going to get shot for you know just being a regular fucking guy and honest then fine i will show it to everybody and i gave him everything that even mentioned him all of the stuff that people were sending me which was ts matt couch and other people that i had met later in the batowski or you know when i first had that meeting with batowski and them and i was like look you may not think – I was like, you're saying that there's a conspiracy, and I was like – and I'm saying that, 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 yeah, there seems to be a conspiracy because my lawyer was having his wife pay a, a this guy. A conspiracy to do what? To make a living? 
That's not a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy to make a living. These guys were these guys were fucking him with him on behalf of Robert David Steele and lawyers. That's what I feel was happening because they were trying to offer me money to do the same thing, and I wouldn't take money for that because I was what? like, to smear to drive a, uh, Jason crazy. Yeah, to drive Jason crazy and fuck with him. And you know what? That's actually definitely not again. That's like. Robert David Steele can't do that stuff directly, but Robert David it's Steele not. is in contact with all these other guys to it's have. Not, to. It's not illegal to to put a, a campaign against somebody and campaign against their, you know, it's that's called uh, opposition research. It's called you know promoting your own shit and trying to smear the other guy. It's it's product, you know. That's that's it's, true. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, but it's, it was a little farther than that because, like, Robert and the rest of these guys were all working together in concert to fuck with Mr. Goodman. So there is a conspiracy there where it was everybody getting paid and all that shit. No, but it's funny because if you think about it, what Robert David Steele is saying in his lawsuit is that Jason Goodman and all of the people on his YouTube channel were fucking with them and co-conspirators and some bullshit against him. And the fact is, is that may be the case, but Robert David Steele also had the same kind of group of co-conspirators working together, making videos and doing all the other shit. It's not going to really matter in court because it's all fucking bullshit, but I felt like it was important to, for him to know exactly why I didn't sue him and who else was actually out there that was trying to puppet the strings on this thing? And since then, you know, like I mentioned it on my show, hey, Jason Goodman, get in contact with me since I have to give all this shit up. I'm also going to have to give up all the, you know, who spoofed the Seth Rich files and all that other crap up. So I was like, Jason, here you go. I'm going to give it to you directly. And you know what? You can fucking hate me for whatever I did. You know, like I've already apologized to you a year ago and I've kept your name out of my mouth every now and then I play the videos because the shit's funny. And I was like, but I'm not trying to deal with this shit anymore. I didn't want to deal with the shit anymore. I got out of it. So like it was me being just altruistic in the sense where I'm just like, here. You know what? It, you know what? It, can I let me interrupt? You know what it sounds like? It sounds like the Fango. It's it's like a toxic environment, right? Because that's I I, I got truth on the wall, right? And I I believe if you stay in the truth, if you stay what's really happening, and you stop with the conspiracy theories and try you know stretching, stretching shit. And I and I'll be honest, you in in the interview you said to me, said you had you might have Seth Rich emails. Said might. Uh, you said might, right? Well, let me finish. I, I I know very powerful people, and and I started Q. I when you when and I'm not I'm not I'm just making a making case in point is that when you say things like that, you're opening yourself up to a toxic environment, and that's what that's that's the centerpiece. And so when when it comes when 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 you know your chickens come home to roost, and you got like people trying to chop you up that's you can look to those kind of comments because it's like you know i honestly i think i it's impossible that that, that you would hold on to seth rich's original emails for three years in my view i think that was is it's just not in it's not in the nature of the person that i'm seeing before me mm-hmm. so, i mean i have an email so from I, aaron I, rich right, right, right there i take a back step right i don't i don't trust you completely because of that statement now, as I get to know you, I know, okay, you're just, you're doing what Matt Couch and Bukowski did. That this was well, certainly what Jason does and 100% what George, George Webb does, right? He's, you know, but you could, you could see the karma that's uh, attached to that. You, you could, you could disagree with me. I mean, it's, if I'm by myself, there's no team. I never say we, right? And, and I'm, I'm, I don't need, you know, I remember when, uh, I'll give you an example. I remember when, when Jason Goodman and um, and George Webb approached H. A. Goodman, right? And you remember that when they they approached H. A. Goodman, and George George Webb, you know, tried to take H. A. Goodman, the fucking you know, national celebrity, right? Was in the, was was one of the, the the biggest Bernie Sanders you know surrogates on the internet, and George Webb is trying to take him under his wing with some bullshit story, and H. A. Goodman figured him out, and within within two or three days, H. A. Goodman had him figured out. I, I had him figured out at about the same, you know, about the same rate. Only when I got very close to him, when, and that was the strategy. Once I was friendly with him, I could see that he was lying about me. 
over and over again. I mean, your lie saying I'm, I'm, I confirmed that I'm gay is ridiculous. I, and it's only, it's only, it's just a, that's just a little dig. That's but a what, troll. It's a troll, right? But what Goodman, what, what George Webb does is he, he, he said, I mean, I can't even remember the list, but my, I have a sister. She's a chemistry professor at Stanford. I, I, I'm a hitman for the SEIU garbage, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm a, a whistleblower inside the SEIU. I'm in the mob. I, I was a guitar player for, for, uh, for Soundgarden. You know, it's just how fucking ridiculous can uh, are you? I, I work for someone, uh, the Mercers. I worked at this company and that company, and he rattles all the stuff off. I, and then I trolled him with that whole Imran Awan thing. I said, oh, I got Imran Awan. I'm going to do an interview with Imran Awan. His, his fucking tail was wagging. Eh, shit. I, then I interviewed him. Eh, but the point is, like, until I got, once I was, like, right next to him, and he started to take personal attacks at me, I, I realized 100% unequivocally how much bullshit it is, right? He's very convincing. I, I've never said that he's a very... He's a talented uh, storyteller. Web. He's Jason is not a, a storyteller. Jason is just a is a money grabber. Right? He's the opposite. Mm -hmm. But but um, that, that's all I want to say. Is that he's he's um that kind of karma when you start making when you get into a ditch with these characters and and they're all telling stories and they're all you know full of shit and then you start to bend the, the shit as well. Well, you know what? It's it's coming. Because then you know what you look up one day, and you're you're in bed with a guy like fucking Schoenberger, right? Who has no talent. It's just some behind the scenes shady ass guy who's got all of your attention. He's got my attention at this moment, right? Because he's he's I, I'm watching him I'm watching him rake you guys over the over the coals, right? He's raking you fucking guys. He's raping you, man, right? And 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 it's funny to watch, right? He's the guy is nobody. He's nobody in the equation. You are the talent. George Webb is the talent. Jason is a talent in his own where he he finds talent. See, Jason is what Schoenberger should be, right? Jason is the is like the talent guy. He brings talent together. He gets, you know, Charles Ortel. He gets this other guy and that guy. But, you know, and then but he, there's also a transparency to it because a lot of times the talent isn't very good and they're probably paying him something, giving him something. Well, I have some money. With all this, like, shit that they're doing, you know, see, I play it a little bit differently because, like, I'm seeding it, and I talked about this a lot on my channel, I'll be like, yeah, sometimes I'll say some funky shit, and I'll have a weird look on my face, and you're gonna be like, huh, what, and I'll be like, that's not for you, that's for those fucking assholes later that are looking to cut me up on something, so, cause, so I can come and shut them down later, you know, like, I have to seed, I have to seed my enemies with the bad stuff that they're gonna come and attack me with, and, you know, for the last year, I've been just doing that with the Schoenberger character where any little thing I says, you know, he's on Twitter and he's cutting me up. And I mean, even at that point, that's not ever going to get him anywhere. But you were asking earlier, you know, what's Dave Acton's deal in this thing? And I think Dave Acton's deal in this thing is that he's freaked out. Because he spent so much time interjecting in the Robert David Steele lawsuit, putting my name up everywhere and all this stuff. See, Robert David Steele was saying that I was going to be a witness against Jason in his lawsuit. And if that comes up, fuck you that's not happening whatsoever and you know even at the same time jason's gonna be asking me do you want to be a witness in the thing and i'm like jason don't you think that that's a stupid fucking idea you know don't you think that that's not going to be helping you because i'm not the one that you guys want to be going after i gave you all the information of the actual people and if you can make something out of that that's you but dave he's pissed because I didn't lay down. See, he had some idea that we were on a team, red team versus blue team, and he was like, all right, if you're on my team, we're going to be doing this shit, and it's going to be all good. But I never agreed to be on his team, and I told him that if, unless I actually speak to him on the phone, meet him in person, there's no way that he could ever consider me, a, me to be a teammate with him in any way, shape, or form. So I was like, you know what, whatever. When he found out that I was talking about Jason Goodman, he flipped his shit and then started going through everything. And then there was the live stream phone call where, you know, like I had talked to Jason on the live stream and, you know, like I was just chatting with him. Jason was pissed off about that. He didn't really give me a chance to tell him that I was on live stream. So I just kind of was like, you know what, fuck it. This is going to be great anyway, because this is going to sow their brains that I'm living rent free in 
to a new fucking level and that's exactly what he did what dave action start doing it's because i didn't know that dave was suing jason as well i think i'm i mean maybe i did i don't i didn't fucking remember i mean i smoke a lot of weed get get over it uh he tells me you know oh yo i'm pissed because you're saying that i'm working with you and i'm doing all this stuff i never fucking said any of that shit i mean jason's the one that's saying that shit and i have no bearing on what the fuck jason says jason has put out bad information before i could give jason the actual legit truth and all the emails and stuff and still all of that stuff's not going to make it out there because what 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 it shows for me is that people were feeding me information that disliked jason that's what that show what all my stuff shows in that respect it doesn't show me going after and attacking anybody it doesn't show me anything it just shows me making videos and usually when i make those kinds of videos i'm not acting like my normal self like i'm doing it in a different way that should be noticeable to anybody that i'm watching my show because it's like okay there's something going on here and at that point in time, here I am sitting next to basically the fucking devil. I call him Belial because, you know, like immediately after the first chance with them, I was like, yeah, there's something wrong here. But it wasn't until I actually went to his house and I caught him one day without one of his little relics that he like always keeps so treasured to him that I got a full picture of who he actually was. And once I got the full picture, I was just like. I'm fucked right now because this guy's going to do whatever he can to fuck me over. And I was like, so the only thing that I can do now is get myself in deep as possible to the point where I could do this, you know, like I can stop the cicada shit. I could put it out there that he has actually been in, you know, been working on the fucking Q shit like a, you know, back channel motherfucker for a long time. And then, you know, re-expose him to the world. A lot of people say, oh, he was a private citizen before. No, he fucking was not. There was You're talking people... about Robert David Steele? No, I'm talking about Thomas Schoenberger. Schoenberger. Thomas Schoenberger was out there not a private individual he was out there on the internet way before any of this stuff happened there was youtube videos all the shit and so if I, I tell you if i had a, if i had to score this i would say the number one scumbag is is aaron rich right? that's the that's number one because of the because of the flow of money number two you put schoenberger down there because he's a thief he's already mm -hmm. stolen money from you you know you know what he's about right and I got to tell you, number three is 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 uh, acting right. He's suing, he's suing Jason for putting putting his face on a coffee mug, and I believe he put your face on a coffee mug, right? Mm -hmm. That's enough. That's a reason to sue and then drag in all this other stuff about the 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 dirty bomb on the Merck Merck Memphis and how they shut down the port of Charleston. What does that have to do with your face on a coffee mug? And what does that have to do with your defamation, right? So so here's his stupid Dave Acton, devious motherfucking Dave Acton, trying to trying to shake down Jason, using Jason as an example because he doesn't like Jason, right? And and trying to is suing him, trying to create this 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 um, precedence as as Acton says. Oh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make legal precedence. What on the back of? Of some, you know, some some rich queer that lives in the West Village, like that's your that you call that you call that fucking responsible behavior. No. I asked you to come on my show because I would I would say I would say right to your face, Dave, you're a fucking loser, Dave. You are no better than your alcohol shaking hand fucking brother for suing Jason, who is you know a scumbag in his own right. But he's not. Jason is not suing anybody. Jason is just a a greedy kind of fucking guy, you know, and, and, and he's, he's cutthroat and he's your friend until he's not your friend anymore. And he's, he's manipulative in, in that way. Right. But he's not suing anybody. Right. George Webb is suing very high profile characters. And that is a, a form of discovery. When you sue John Podesta, you don't sue Jason fucking Goodman because because he has a condo in the in 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 the village and you think you can take some money out of him and get and get out so that pisses me off right that's why that's why i uh and that's it not a defense to jason i haven't talked to jason he does he thinks i'm you know I, I never even talked to him i talked to him during the the when i was chasing george webb around giving him a nervous breakdown i you know i had mentioned but i have no relationship with any of those guys mm -hmm. yeah people are trying to say i have a relationship with goodman did I even, does Jason still even, I don't even see it anymore. 
No. I mean, dude, I, Dave Acton tried to say I had a two-year relationship with Jason Goodman. I'm like, yeah, a relationship where I went to his channel and then he talked mad shit about me. And, you know, like, I had nothing to do, you know. Like, I've always been the one that's been reaching out to Jason and just trying to, like, smooth the situation over. And with Dave Acton, he was doing that shit to his brother. And then he start, when he started doing it to Jason and just kept on doing it and doing it and doing it, like, I was just all like, this can't be the, the mind of a normal, rational human being that's trying to, like, do something good in It's not. There's the nothing world. good. Not. There's, no, there's no good that comes out of it because you're making shit up. You're, you're, it's in the legal look. Lawyers will look at that. The judge will look at it. Not the lawyers, but the judge will look at it, and it's called a fishing expedition. Dave Acton is on a fishing expedition. That's your, that's Jason's defense. He's fishing. It's the same thing that the DNC, it's the same thing Mueller did with, with Trump. That's the best example. It's called the legal term is fishing with a P, PH fishing, fishing expedition. Right. And and uh, it's you know, it's a legal form of extortion. And once the judges, once you make that case that that's what it is, that there is no evidence that there's there's you know, they're stirring the stirring up the pot. That's what Dave is doing to Jason, who's a you know, he doesn't have, he does. I don't know if he knows how to defend himself, but that's certainly what you know. And it's it's just it's just disgusting because it's you're going to legal, you know, courts and you got to file papers and the there's expenses. Why? So you can, so you can legal precedence. Are you fucking kidding me? What a loser. Well, I mean, that's the thing is I thought about it with uh, Jason and I mean, think about it. He's got to go to depositions. He's got a, de he's got a court date on the same day that I do. And I mean, he's got to fucking pay to go to the fucking court date. He's got to fly, drive, whatever the fuck, you know, like that shit costs it's money, a, it's man. It's in New York. It's in the Southern no, it's District. In, it's in Virginia for the RDS one. Eastern District of Virginia. I thought it got moved to to New York. No, I think the Acton one got moved to New York. Dave, Dave Acton's case. Yeah, Dave Acton's case is in New York. The RDS case is in uh, the Eastern District of Virginia. So think about it. They wanted to have Stephen Biss has wanted to have multiple well, cases you know, filed on Jason. Jason's the way Jason Goodman handles himself is it 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 opens it oh he opens himself up to that kind of behavior. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that's true. He's arrogant. He's he's pompous. He's you know what I mean? And 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 someone some people just you push them and they're gonna be like fuck you. You know what? I know how to write a lawsuit and I'm gonna torture this guy, right? And Jason doesn't know how to back off, right? He didn't back off, and now he got what he got, right? So I don't have any opinion of this other the other guy because Robert David Steele because I really don't know much about it, right? But his background seems to be that of a spook, right? Yeah. And you know, and um, but that's neither here nor there. I don't, I don't even know. But there, His... he's he's not a nice guy for suing Goodman. There's other ways to handle, you know, that, right? Well, I've had. God, I'm sorry. His uh, J Robert David Steele says very openly that he used to create psyops for the world, meaning like he has it listed on public pages and stuff. Where he was the one of the first people to run a psyop on like the American people and. I mean, all the stuff that he's doing now, in my opinion, is considered to be a psyop. And if you look at what this case is going on, you see, it was originally these suits once against Once you Steve. know that, once you know something like that, you know who the guy is, why would you get involved on a, in, a, in a talk show with someone with that kind of background, right? I would never, I mean, it's you got to have your head examined to, to want to, you know what I, I mean, to work with that guy. Well, I had a plan on my working with him like people were like dude you're gonna have robert david seal on no what the fuck and i was like no 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 no. we're doing a bit you guys you guys gotta light it out it'll be like a three it'll be a three show arc where we start with with this guy and then see what happens with him i knew full well that the guy was kind of shady when it first began when it when the interaction first began but like i'm one of those people that's willing to take the risks and go through all of the work in order to actually expose these motherfuckers so if i gotta talk to robert david Steele on my channel one two three times before i blow him out and just be like you know what you're total disinformation artist and i think you're a fucking clown and you can suck my beat you can suck my weenus and i hung up on him you know like and then yeah. It ends up me getting all this information and looking at all the stock that he was telling me and all the information he was getting, uh, the information that I was gathering from him. Because I thought it was strange that TS and this 
uh, RDS guy were connected, and then they were both connected to a lawyer, and they were talking about doing, you know, they were all working together even before this fucking lawsuit went out. So... I was very, very curious to see how things would go forward. So, you know, like, sometimes you just have to be the guy that's playing the role that's watching this stuff going on. You know, my goal has always been to take out, like, these kind of, you know, negative motherfuckers on the internet because they go around doing this shit without impunity and you know like hog belly grifters i look at robert david Steele's being one of those hog belly grifters because like what the f has he done this you is know? how you do it though this this kind of this kind of talk is kind of platform right I, I mean i'm 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 the uh for lack of a better term i'm like the cosmic mirror right i'm just bouncing it off right because i have no direct involvement with any of it right mm -hmm. i interjected myself with web because as i said the girl had died jen moore uh, but uh, this is how you do it. You expose them. You talk about them. You say, you know what? This is this is your this is your record, Thomas Schoenberg. We just I just read your record into the record, right? This is what we found out about you in a very short period of time, and the fact that you've lied to me three times through emails, and I have the email. You left an email tra track. There's now a paper record of you, you know, you know. Uh, aggravated uh, harassment kind of you know that's what it amounts to right that's what you're doing i just stop it i right? stop but but that's how you do it you talk about it man you don't hide you don't you don't you don't uh curl up in a ball you talk about it right there's no there's nothing wrong with you know airing it out and saying hey listen that's what these guys are right mm -hmm. it's it's not funny it's not a um it, it's not funny when people get murdered it's not funny when people are uh, getting sued and then the expense of that and the aggravation and the jumping into the unknown. Like this Schoenberger, he's threatening you with criminal prosecution. Mm -hmm. He's saying that you're involved in a criminal conspiracy to uh, to, 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 to wiretap someone's house. Right? Correct. That's, that's insanity, man. Whether, listen, I, I, and I wouldn't expect you to answer, but whether that, that was even a conversation at all, is not the point unless the guy has evidence of that, right? Or 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 someone confesses to doing something like that, it didn't happen, right? It didn't. It doesn't. It didn't happen. And then it could be. It could be blown off as locker room talk. Hey, let's go bug his house, right? Right? Is that that like? Hey, let's go bug the guy's house. Let's see what we can find out. Right? <laughs> you have another beer, right? So. It's just it's just very underhanded. If he's if this guy is in doing legal documents in a civil case, trying to parlay that into criminal prosecution, you know, somewhere else because he doesn't like you because he owes you money and you stop being obedient, you stop you know kissing his ass. Uh, it's fucking some devious shit, man. It's mm -hmm. super digit. It's super devious, bro. And honestly, like I've been doing this shit for a year now, and you know. Like, now I look at back at everything that's happened, it's like, you know, this guy was trying to control every little bit about me and not doing very well, and once he realized that, you know, like, I was going to not be following along, he came up with a, a way to get me wrapped up, and I mean, we've tried to serve legal paperwork on him before, he he ditches out and he doesn't take the paperwork, or, you know, he put goes into hiding, which he's currently in hiding right now on the run, nobody knows where he's at, so, like... It's constant with this because, you know, he's got deposition dates that are going out and stuff. You know, I could have gotten him served at one of his depositions, but unfortunately, you know, nobody's throwing me that paperwork trying to get me to, you know, trying to help out in that respect. So I've just kind of left it as it was. And I'm like, I'm going to let this guy say whatever he wants to say on record. And, you know, when I actually bring out the evidence, evidence, you know, because, like, I got videos and messages and stuff. I gave, I showed everybody all the emails and shit like that. I didn't show. You know, like, you never show your biggest piece of evidence. You never show your biggest shit to the world like that, you know. But I gave it to the lawyers because I know that they want that shit. And I've been collecting all the shit that he's been saying online, and I've been giving it to the lawyers too. So they'll be able to see I not disagree. only – I disagree with that. I disagree with holding the evidence in. I think that the the key is to drop the bomb right in front of his face, right? Yeah, but I gotta do my deposition and and get the biggest audience you can with a drum roll, 
and say, here's the evidence and just blow him up. If you well, have. that's what we're going to do on 731 of this month when I do my deposition. I'm going to live stream my deposition. And oh, good, that's good. when everything will come out because I already told the lawyer guys, like, I live stream this shit. I live stream my subpoena compliance with the world to see. And I was like, I'm also going to live stream this deposition because you guys are going to be recording it and audio visual stenography it so i might as well too and you know obviously i'm not going to show the lawyer or, or the stenographer on there but it's going to be me and it'll be all the information that i have and i'm already set up to do all this stuff because i felt like there was enough in there that we looked at and plus that was the first time that i went through it there was still more stuff that you know like i had to go dig through and find people are wondering why i'm not online and going through all this stuff is because you know in some of that stuff there's passwords and shit like that that are associated to business shit and i don't want that to go out online and you know sometimes i fuck up like that so literally yeah. right now all i have now is basically recorded phone calls with the uh, the certain individuals since i was in arizona it's not illegal for me to fucking you know record the phone call but i have other stuff that i can't put out that i've recorded in other states so like it's kind of a situation as to i don't want to get any more trouble but like i'm not trying to fight with this guy online anymore he could say whatever he want i put out all the actual information emails everything that i need to in order to keep myself satiated and i think that my only option is you're right get a big audience get everybody to be there and it's gonna be subpoena show down the fango yeah. versus the aaron rich lawyers right and put him put him away you know what i'm saying because he's the the court obviously because it's the dnc don't underestimate the power of who the who the, the dnc and aaron rich's lawyers are and how they were put in place to make the story go away you know it's it's just um you know the the object is to torture you to harass you to well, they're to not doing a good you. job no, to keep you quiet, to make you afraid, right? And and again, I, I get one hundred percent. This guy's the Schoenberg has got his hand. In some, is they def, he's definitely got the hand his hand in their pocket. He's getting something out of it, some side of some sort of favor, mm -hmm. you know, down the road, man. Well, they won't talk to me directly on the phone. I only get emails from him, so I just find that hard to believe. I think that he went to them with just some information and made some claims. They got him on deposition and shit, and then that's it. And, you know, I have stuff, calls between me and Mr. Patelski. I played a little bit of one of them on one of my streams. I got calls between, you know, like me and the Beth person and all the harassment that she was receiving associated with shadow box and extortions from the show and burger guy like – it was so much worse than I could have ever thought it was. I thought that this guy was just like a fucking roach, you know? I thought he was a roach. And what I've come to realize is that, you know, he's like the king of all roaches. And, you know, it's been it's been hell, you know? Everybody I know online, anybody that ever interacts with me gets emails from him. Anybody in my chats, if he finds out who you are, he's going to start emailing you and start trying to poison the well against me and say, yeah. oh, Defango had CP, Defango had this, Defango's a pedophile, Defango he's been stole doing, money he's for been, the... He's been sending me crap every day for, for like a week. Mm -hmm. that's uh, why his... are you sending it to me for? What? A, who the hell am I? I? I mean, just, you know, I'm just... I did a, I make a, I made a video about LARPers. That's all. And your, your name kept, keeps coming up, man. It's because you're fucking, you're, you're, you're the roach king. You fucking missed the roach. Yeah, the king of the roaches. Belial. I, I, I just don't understand how, how much farther I'm going to be able to go into this thing. But like the entire time that I've, been into this like i never wanted to be a part of this i never wanted to be you know at first people were buttering me up to get into the rds lawsuit and then i was like fuck you all you, i don't want to be in this shit and mm. they left me out of it and now dave acton is trying to bring me into his lawsuit because he's like oh you're slandering me you're saying all kinds of shit and be like dude this is what you fucking do every day you've been doing this about me and deleting your videos every day because you're just uh, trying to I'll poison the well George. Alcohol, George, and Creepy Dave, you know? What is it? What is it? The mother. Your mother's proud of you guys. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. proud. And, you know, this is all, you know, I agree with you that this is the DNC lawyers trying to come push me down. But the thing is, is people always talk shit about me saying, oh, we used to be a DNC operative. I volunteered for the Obama it's the campaign. Same reason, it's the same reason they sued, they, they dragged uh, Corsi into the, the scenario. Because Dr. Corsi is a very believable... You know, he's a soft, older man with a PhD. You don't want a guy like that out there talking about Seth Rich. You don't want a guy like that, you know, saying that Julian Assange is correct and Julian Assange is is uh, you know is a publisher. You know, you just don't want it. So you so you 
So you drag him into the mix, right? And you make his life, you know, miserable. I'm so, you know, you get a, a gag order so he can't talk. It's intimidation, right? That's that's the that's the nature. That's the big picture, right? That is the uh, the nature of our politics right now, where it's uh, everything's a witch hunt, everything is uh, you know intimidation. It's a police state, you know, in some degree, to some degree, you know. I agree. I agree. And I mean, they're just doing this to get at me. But the thing is, is my friend uh, Trevor, and I call him my friend just because you know, like I consider him a friend, even though he doesn't answer my phone calls or anything anymore. But we, you know, I finally got to meet him for the first time. You know, like I was actually trying to be nice to him. You know, I sent him money to help him out with what was going on in his life because they destroyed this guy because of his connection to WikiLeaks. And I mean, you know, he lost everything. And when I was sitting there working with him, I thought that we were just trying to, you know, get this guy back on their feet. You know, we were going to do something good. And this other character, Schoenberger, used this guy and then he did everything that he could to get him out of the company as fast as he possibly could. And. And to me, it always set up. It always seemed like a pain because Trevor used to say, you know, like, yeah, I did work for David Brock, and then David Brock fired me, and then within a month or two, this Radic situation happens, and I was destroyed. And he was like, I think Thomas works for David Brock. I mean, I don't have any like direct evidence or anything, just what somebody has said. But like to me, all of this just seems to be just one big gotcha. Like they were trying to get me because I was making videos on WikiLeaks and promoting the shit. They get right. onto me utilizing the Cicada 3301 style puzzle, and then they basically just use this guy to infiltrate my fucking life. And they know everything about me. They know what I like. They know you know where I live, how old I. I am everything and since that point in time like you know this guy's been manipulating me to the point where now he's just throwing me into this lawsuit and it's a place that i don't need to be but you know what unlike other people out there there's really not a lot going on in my life other than the little things i have to do here and there when i get consulting gigs to make some money and honestly I'm ready for this. You know what? I'm okay yeah. with live streaming all of this stuff and going through this process. So at least people will have an awareness of what's actually happening because it's not any different than I started my channel. I started my channel just being me, a guy in front of the computer, and that's still what I am. I mean, the tech's looking a little bit better or whatever nowadays, but to me, I'm just still the same guy that's doing the same thing. And, you know, I started well, that I channel up wars because – as the referee, I, I'm not. I don't. I you don't make me angry at all. You're doing your thing. You did it. You may have been a little sloppy. You gotten. You know. You got in the ring with the wrong characters, right? And that's that's uh, forgivable, right? And um, you know, and uh, and even Goodman. I mean, Goodman is just a clown and a you know, you know, mediocre talent with his show and all that shit, right? And he's he's getting he's getting sued. You know, from every angle, right? He doesn't know how to shut his mouth, right? But that doesn't make him. That makes him like like an idiot, like it makes somebody you don't want to be around, right? So he's not really guilty. But 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 the Schoenberger guy with his hand in your pocket, the the Aaron Rich surrounded by expensive lawyers who know what they're doing, right? And and acting trying to play lawyer, suing people for or 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 uh, the other spook, Robert David Steele suing this guy. For what to get to make precedence to to you know discover some other thing a fishing expedition it's just not right man it's just that's this shit is not right, right? So. No, i don't think it's right at all man I mean, I don't want to be a part of any of this shit, but I feel like who else in this world, you know, like I find myself in the most precarious of places, you know, like I always end up in the weirdest situations that I got to deal with. But I guess it's just part of my journey, I guess. I mean, what am I doing for the rest of this month other than uh, chilling? I might be going to uh, I might be going dry, flying back to the East Coast again to do a consultation gig on some ransomware if somebody, you know, wants to hire me for it. But I mean, right. dude, I'm going to New York next month. I'll be there for a while. I'm going to the MAGA meetup and then just hanging out, you know, like enjoying the city. And like, I'm just a regular guy, yeah, you know, I'm like so well. I'm, I'm, stuff... I'm, very, I'm very accessible in the city. I'm, I'll be I'm always I'm like, you know, I live in Brooklyn, but I'm, you know, I'm in the city all the time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm a good tour guide, bro. I fucking I lived here my whole life. I know every I know every block. It's <laughs> awesome. See, I'm not like that, you know. I've only been yeah. to the, that place the one time, and even after that, you know, like, I I don't think I spent enough time there to really understand it. So that's why I'm gonna try yeah. to spend a little bit more time out there just to 
really get what's going on there because I mean my life has been pretty weird since I've met these people and you know hey at least I'm you know like surviving like I could I survive in a place like New York City for very long with the money I got probably not but you know look I know that I I, I, I know I got something in the future for me. If I can make it to where I put my own goals, then I'll be happy with myself. And I'm the hardest person that I know on themselves. Yeah, you'll make it anywhere. You get exactly. New York cheap. It could be cheap if you know how to get around, you know. If you know, like, the neighborhoods, if you know where the, the cheap eateries are, if, you got to get used to the subway. You can't live in – you're not going to live in the middle of Manhattan. You're going to live in the suburbs. You're going to live, like – you know, in Brooklyn or Queens or maybe Williamsburg, you know, you live in the, you live around the edge. You don't live in the middle. And sometimes the edge is even cooler than the middle, you know? Hmm. Like, you know, Goodman has a, he lives in a nice neighborhood. That's a fucking nice neighborhood, right? I mean, I goof on him and say it's a gay neighborhood, but it's really a very, I mean, he lives in Chelsea, New York. That's a beautiful, you know, spot. So, and, 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 and kudos to him, man. The guy worked hard. He's a Hollywood guy, he made his money. He bought says, himself a condo. I don't knock him for that at all. He says he's you know, lived there for like, 20 years, bro. Yeah, he probably made his money. He, he he did a good investment. He probably bought the thing. He's probably saying he's renting, but he bought it. No, he, and he bought probably it. Owned, he owns it. Yeah, he, owns, he probably owns his condo. And, and so what, man? That's a... That's, a, that's respectable. Um, you know, that's that's not the uh, it's not the it's not a bad thing, man. It's just uh so where do we go with this, man? Where's all this shit this internet shit go, man? I got dragged into this backwards. Yeah, you know I mean that, I feel bad for you that you got dragged into this shit, but you know where I see this going, I'll be honest with you. Like I see this Aaron Rich thing happening at the end of the month, and then I see my life being totally chill and fine until sometime around march next year around my birthday when they actually get this thing into court probably and then you know maybe they're gonna have to pay to fly me out and do all this stuff but i'm not paying for shit if they want me to do anything they're paying me for me to do it and they're sending me the check or whatever the fuck because that's how it's gonna go and that's the same thing goes for fucking dave acted Dave Acton, you can do whatever fucking LARPy shit that you want to do. You can say whatever you want to say on your YouTube channel. I'm going to keep making videos on LARP Wars because I just did that because I wanted to be able to talk about the bullshit. Yeah, that they every have time out there. you keep answering Dave Acton, if you keep answering in a video, you, you're feeding you're feeding the troll. You know what I'm saying? Like I know, but this troll can't eat too much. You know what I'm saying? He'll he'll get overfilled too soon. Very soon he'll be overfilled and he won't be able to keep he's, up. He's got, the thing about that guy is that he he's he's a he, this is this is the mo right. You've got you got Schoenberger who's a who's a shitty musician. Right? He's pissed off. He's pissed off. He hates fucking artists. He hates guys like that. Hate people with talent. Right? They fucking hate people with talent. And and so is so is act uh, Acton because. He's probably stuck in a shitty job. He, he took a stab at acting, and he sucks. Hey, ho, fucking ho. He's a, he's a, he's de de deadbeat, and I've been around enough of those guys, right? You know, like the deadbeat musicians, and uh, and now they they and they, they they go through their life bitter and you know fucking angry and all that shit, man. That's not right. Yeah, well, I don't want that for him, you know. I'm telling those guys, like, Jason and, the, and to the fucking Dave, I mean, if you guys are planning on deposing me in your fucking lawsuits, pro se or whatever, uh, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing the thumbnail. good fucking luck. Oh, yeah, it's a good one, right? Yeah, it's good. I like your luck. thumbnail. It's good, it's good. Fango TV. Lark line. Debate showdown. I mean, it looks good, right? I mean, literally, if they want to depose me in their shit, they're going to pay all the money and all the bullshit to get me in front of them. But like we said, you were saying earlier, uh, unless I get actually subpoenaed by an actual fucking judge in that case, yeah. I ain't going to do shit. This Aaron Rich case is for a different reason because I already had a feeling that this was going to happen. And I utilized all of my legal understandings and then all the legal understandings of a bunch of lawyers in Arizona that used to work for my mother that lo fucking love her. And we came up with a rather interesting plan because, you know, if they're going to try to fuck me or any of that shit, that's fine. I'm already doing things that they have no idea how to create contingency plans for because they can't get all my channels down, number one. And number yeah. two, they're not going to be able to play the same kind of lawyer game with me because I may not have been in any lawsuits before, but I am unafraid of anything that they could put up in front of me. And even if somebody starts throwing around jail time and all that other stuff, I'm just going to laugh my ass off and be like, 
you better bring some fucking good evidence or I'm going to crush you. So where we're at with that case is I'm more than happy to do anything I need to do. Punishment. The process is that well, punishment. To me, it's, it's not a punishment. So you enjoy it. That's it. That's, a that's the best way. Good living is the best revenge. You know what I'm saying, man? What are you eating? French fries? Yeah, I'm eating French fries. Sorry. Somebody brought me some in and out and I was just like picking at it because I was like a little hungry. But, you know, I don't give a fuck about these people. You know, like Dave, he seemed like he was cool. He was trying to butter me up at one point. Now that's done. The honeymoon is over or whatever. You know, now yeah. the, the real relationship begins and the I guy am, won't, I, won't have I any conversations still, with me. I still am interested I, I mean, this 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 is like again a dumpster fire with all the characters. But I am still interested. The reason why I dip my dip my toe into the story is because the the answer is is why why are there people interested in this right now? Why are people watching us go back and forth about this this uh, this this LARP war? I guess what it is. It's more interesting than it's like a soap opera. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. how people go down the rabbit hole now. It, it's it becomes more interesting when you stay the characters the 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 larps that are most interesting are the ones that stay in character like q still people today no one has ever admitted that it isn't the president of the united states it's a masterful you know whoever whoever's organizing it and continuing it and i don't believe it's you but somebody is definitely continuing to do it Right? What, what was it? Quiff Mike, Quinn Michaels said he, he was Q. I mean, everybody, this 10, 25 people have said they're Q. Mm -hmm. But, but that's, a, that's a, it's almost like with uh, psychic phenomena, right? When you have, I used to be a professional psychic, by the way. I don't think you know that. I used to read tarot cards in a nightclub. And people would, they'd ask you a question. And, and uh, if you told them the answer, like if I, I'm giving you the answer, they don't really believe you. But if you say, ah, I see in the cards right here, it says, or, you know, or the crystal ball says, then they believe you. And that, that just, um, the, the Q, the Q LARP is amplified because that's, there's still that element of mystery. But when people start suing each other and people start dying, like in, you know, with Jenny Moore about, you know, that, that it's because she exposed, uh, uh, Bill Clinton raping a boy. And there's no evidence of that. And you've got, you've got Goodman, George Webb, and uh, and and um, Thomas Paine, Robert, fucking Mr. Moore, all lying, creating this story with no evidence. It's just, it just, it's dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, um, it it diffuses, it diffuses the mystery of the story too, right? Because in the end. Jenny Moore, I, I hope I, I contributed to that, that, that she's not, she was just a kind of a victim, victimized in a LARP in the world, the, the mystical world of George Webb. Is he a Mossad agent? Is he working with the CIA? Does he, you know what I mean? Is all these, all this mystery surrounding him and he stays in the character. George Webb is the, the, you know, executive LARP. He still pretends to be somehow connected to something, something more than himself, right? At one point, I was that I was connected to somebody else. I was working, you know, with informants inside of the Department of Sanitation. I was working with the DOI, the Department of Investigations. That was all real, and I was doing it on video, despite what they were telling me not to do it. <laughs> so I was still doing it, you know. But um, is that a LARP? No, that's real. That was that my my experience with whistleblowing was very real, and um, there was a little theater to it, but. But uh, but with Webb and those guys, it's just it's just a you know how many times is he is he going to lie to the audience, and um, you know and then uh, and let them down with what he's trying to find out you know and uh, I don't know I just say stay in the truth. You know? mm -hmm. That was the question I asked you. Where does this thing go? I mean, I don't know, man. I couldn't tell you, dude. I mean, I've been staying truthful and doing my you know fucking life. That's what I've been putting online is my life for a long time. So, right. I mean, if somebody's trying to come at me with truth, like, yeah, sure, they could cut up all of my shit and try to make me look like a bad guy. Maybe that's the point. I'm not exactly sure. Where I see this one going is that I see me, go I see me coming out top unscathed and yeah. at the end of the day, like, you know, Dave Acton's going to do what he's going to do. If he wants me in his bullshit, they're going to have to pay for me to be there. 
I'm, there's no other way that I'm even gonna consider fucking around with that shit. I'll make little videos and fuck with him, and you know, like correct a record with him because that's what he wants me to do. But for the rest of these guys, like with Jason Goodman, honestly, I, I would much rather just have you know a nice fucking dinner and just sit down live stream and be like, "Yo, man, so right, <sighs> what's Someone's up?" Saying, Someone's saying in the chat, "Can Marcus draw a card?" I don't have my cards. Yeah. You don't got your cards? Dang. They're in the closet, man. But, Dang. Uh, I, I have them. The Thanks for the diamond, card, Lady Katie. This is, uh, this is the fool right here. This is the You pull the fool card, right? It's every, it's play. Mm -hmm. It's theater. You know what I mean? Like, I like doing this, man. I, I mean, I like I, I like doing the YouTube thing. You know, it's fun. It's become, it's become part of, like, originally it was, I was kind of like a Dave Acton suing, and you learn your legal, you get your legal chops up. But then it ends, right? It's over. You did your job. And now it's like, well, you have this skill. You have this camera skill, you know, work in the frame. And you have this legal skill. And you, you then you start to – and it, I just made the decision. For me, I just made a decision to go, you know, into uh, the bigger picture, politics. And uh, I like it. I think I'll, I'm going to probably stay, you know, do this for a while. I think it's you could be a pretty good, good. I think you could be a good political operative. I don't know operative. I don't know what that means, really. I mean, I, 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 my, my position in politics is, and you know, I, I'm not a socialist. Uh, the second we start talking about this, everybody will say, "Oh, he's a socialist, socialist, socialist." It's not a wig, motherfucker. It's not a <laughs> shadow broker, dude. Yeah, shadow broker is my boy. He's just fucking with you. Fucking wig, jerk off. Shadow broker. That's actually the. That's the shadow. That's the guy. He's. The guy, he lives on a spaceship, he smokes cigarettes, he pays for everything. He paid for me to go to DEF CON. He was the guy that was funding me to get to the bottom of what was going on with Cicada 3301. I mean, yeah. that Shadow Broker guy, if you really want to know who's funding Defango, it's that yeah. guy, and then there's this other chick. Her name's Cherie. She's really wonderful. And then there's the rest of the people that are on my Defango channel. Because you know how I funded the last three years of my life? YouTube, yeah. the little tiny bit of money that I had saved, and then the ups on crypto. Like this year, I mean, I've been surviving because I took a project making a puzzle. I've said just, this before. I just realized how you're going to pay me for this uh, for this interview. You're going to show me one day. You're going to give me 20 minutes of your time and show me how you make your make your set look so pretty with all the. Oh, the dude, shit. I, that would be. I would be more than happy to do that. Like I actually do that for people all the time. Like. Uh, yeah, Regardless of what people say about me online, I've worked with a lot of different YouTube channels on getting their yeah. setup like mine. Hmm. Mm, yeah. 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 I've been. I mean, I've been. I've been on. I think you know we haven't talked about uh, Lift the Veil really, and he's he's a. I like Nathan. I think Nathan's a good guy. I think he's you know he's he takes a couple of digs. I don't necessarily like his. Um, everything is a you know he's he's into this pedophilia thing. All the. Hollywood people, pedophiles. I don't like that shit. When they, when he start talking about that, I turn it off. You know. Well, you know he's involved with the the Schoenberger character. He knew Schoenberger before I did. Yeah. Well, that that's that's interesting. That's interesting. He does. He is seems to be. I, I mean, I could talk to Nathan about that. About you know, is he a little cozy with the guy? But the guy's the guy is. You know, I don't want to. Well, let's let's leave him alone, man. That's the way you do it. But still, hey, man, I don't have any problems with Nathan as long as he's no longer building conspiracies around me and doing it because someone is feeding him the information so that he could do it. Yeah. And yeah. That's all I'll say that about is, that. That is, that is not, not nice. Right. Because your friend Schoenberger is feeding me information about you that I, I came to the conclusion very quickly is total bullshit because he can't give me the evidence. So what he wants to do, and Nathan has done that before is he gives the guy a platform. He says, "Okay, come on and, and let let them talk," and I, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I'd rather tear them up. I'd rather shred them. And then you, you want, you want time? Good. All right. So hundred dollars, <laughs> make them pay. You want to advertise your bullshit? You know, put the money up. I'll give it to charity. Right. I'll feed my cat. You know what I mean? Like, but you're not gonna. I'm not gonna give you a platform. So I, so you could come on here and say. That that the Fango is is was is in a criminal conspiracy to go bug the Seth Rich house, and 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 I he told me so, and and I said no, and it's just you know, prove it. 
if that's what actually happened and he has a recording of that, that's a different story, bro. I mean, that's, you know what I mean? You got to, you know, but I, 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 within a few minutes, it just doesn't, it doesn't add up. It's not, so you don't give you, you don't give a guy like that, uh, a platform, Nathan, you don't give that idiot a, a way to, you know, a place to let him make his own channel. I said, I told him, I says, you want to, you want to do something like that? Make a video of yourself. Make a make your statement and and submit it and and if if it's believable and it's 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 there's humor to it or there's some kind of entertainment value I'll play it why not you know just to keep it under five minutes yeah keep it under five minutes because people got fucking lives and shit right right right, right? see my yeah. my my ideas for these guys have was, have, was all, have always been the same and it's just like dude tell the truth this guy wanted to. Fuck with my life, and you know yeah. what? He's successful in fucking with my life, but I think that he started to get really worried because, like, it's not affecting me as it used to. And now, like, I actually have real people that are out there that are in law enforcement. And I mean, it's crazy. I just think to myself right now, I'm like, dude, what happens if this guy fix up another mark? What happens if this guy's been taking money from another person? What happens if this guy just got a new car and all this other shit? You know, like, yeah. who's the next fucking victim? And, yeah, you know, that's what we were trying to stop. That's what it's I was trying right, to stop. 100% that that's, that's, that's the character. That's the type of character you're dealing with. He's going he's gonna to get in your pocket. You Any deal you make with him, he's going to rip you off or he's going to try to rip you off. He, he's he's he doesn't have the talent to succeed you know and you just stay away from a guy like that now i i know in doing this he's probably watching and now i'm gonna get 10 emails he's gonna say i'm gonna expose you that was his last email i'm, I'm gonna expose you conti i'm exposing you i wish i could show you my screen i'll show it to you. uh you can but, uh, actually i think I, I i might fuck up though that's right oh yeah you might fuck up I might fuck it up. Don't I don't want to touch anything because I'm gonna you know, Well, to what you do is you hit the little three dots up in the top corner, and you'll see something that says share screen. I'm not gonna do that because I got too much other stuff on my screen. No, no, I feel you. I'm just saying, but you know, in the future, if you ever try hey, to do that, do me a favor, bro. Move your cursor off of my face. Oh, sorry, I just moved it on there. My bad, bro. My bad. <laughs> well, I mean. Not. I feel like we've gotten a lot really talked about, you know, at least some good information good good out there. Good and we we know each other at least a little bit more so you can see that, you know, yeah, I talk shit or whatever, I'll call you gay, whatever, but that was more just me, like, giving a dig at you, you know. It's entertainment, man. I said the same shit about you. It's funny, right? Yeah, it's, it's funny. That's not, that's not, that's why, grow some skin, right? There's no, there's no shame in that, right? I don't, I don't censor my board. I don't. You know, only if somebody makes threats or they're just totally obnoxious, attacking other people, then I'll I'll delete it. But but uh, speech, man, that's this is all that's all this is. It's free speech, right? It's we're speaking. We're we're it's a creative endeavor. It's in my view, it's it's the ground floor. It's pirate radio, you know. It's live pirate radio, you know. And um, it's just you know, it's only a man with a microphone can tell you what he loves the most. The red white stripes, you know, <laughs> and this is a tough gig, right? It's all it is, right? When I mean, I'm you and I were bouncing it off, but but when you're when you're doing this, and anybody that can prevail with just just the the microphone and the camera, you know, it's like stand up comedy almost, right? It's, that's the hardest gig, one or you know, one guitar, one voice, a very hard hard gig. And if I salute anybody that can that breaks through doing it and. You certainly have broken through. I'm getting there. You know, I'm almost, I'm getting, I'm on the, on a ledge, you know, and it's a, it's a tough gig, man. And, uh, but, uh, it, it's, it's, it does, I, I say it, it's a, it's a better gig when you're doing, when you're staying in the truth, when you're doing justice for others, right? That may sound corny or even gay, that but it's when you're doing shit for others, you know, you, when you, you got your cursor in my face again. I'm no, sorry. Keep doing that. You got your cursor on my eyeball, man. It's, it's not like, supposed oh. to be showing the cursor for this window. <laughs> anyway. Hold on. All right, Defango, man. It's almost past my bedtime, man. Like, fucking, I get up early in the morning. Man. All right, dude. I it's mean, your, I didn't want funny. to take too much of your time, but I do appreciate you coming on to the it's show good, and talking with like, me. I feel like we got it all out, though, right? I, I, I took some – I had some notes, man. I, I felt like I talked about – 
I took notes. All the, all the characters, you know, um, and such. But uh, you're on the right side of it. You're on the right side of history here. You're not. You're not. You're not the bad guy. You're not suing people. You're not some some shady Jewish guy with his hand in everybody's pocket. You're not. You know. You're not. You're not. You have talent. You don't even need to do any of that shit. Man. You just do what you do. What you do. Right, and then and you'll you'll if you stick around long enough, you'll eventually you're already a front runner when names are named in terms of online presence. You're definitely in the top, you know, twenty five, maybe, you know, and that's that's impressive. That's a hard that's a hard thing to do, you know. And um, I don't know. For me, I I want to I would like to see this, you know, merge into something maybe more musical, where where you can actually have a show where you have live bands and. You know, I like doing the street thing, you know, putting the, putting, putting the, you know, putting the mic in front of people's face, you know, wherever you are, right? Like the gay parade, right? I had no idea I was going to run into a bunch of Christians bashing gays, right? That was like fascinating. You know what I mean? You just throw yourself into the fire and see what happens, you know, see, see what, uh, some Marches good shit on the street, huh? I like it though. Yeah. yeah. It's, the, you know, the, the equipment is, I'm still just using a phone and a, and a steady cam and that's. That's the whole setup, really, and a, and a microphone. That's that's the key. So you got a, you're using your phone for your entire setup. Right now, no, no, no. This is a PC, but but when I'm on the street, it is. Yeah, it's a it's an iPhone. It's a um. It's a, I use a you plug a you plug one of these things the microphone. Mm. You see it? It's on, I plug it on. I have it on my hat. Ah. But it's a uh, it's a it's a very good microphone. It's a condenser. It's a Rode I don't know Smart Lav, and you plug it you plug that right into the phone. There's the phone. You plug it right into the phone, right? What keep the mic six inches off your face, right? And now you you there's no wind, there's no um, you know that's my thing. Man. Like audio is my thing, right? And and uh. Right, and then you you get a, the the steady cam, and you've got a Hollywood set walking around because it's steady. It's an iPhone. The cameras are excellent, whatever side of the camera you're using, and uh, and and the the you know the the broadcast quality audio. You that's all you really need. Man. I found it to be enough. And uh, you know this 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 other stuff, those OBS or whatever it's called, is a pain in the ass, man. It, should have... it just takes a little bit of learning. It's a learning curve, yeah. Yeah, once you learn it all, though, like you get cool shit, like what I've been doing, and I mean, I feel like I've do I'm still doing less than I used to, but I still have fun with it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So you want me to take us out with some music? Yeah, we could take us out with some music. I figured we could do a nice little sign off. But thanks to everybody out there in the Defango channels, Defango on D Live, YouTube, Twitch, Periscope, Mixer, and Facebook. Uh, thanks for. Tuning in and watching, that was uh, the interview, LARP line with Marcus Conti, talking about, you know, basically the truth about what's going on in my life and answering any questions that he has. So, guys, say much love to you guys, and thanks for being here. We might be, we'll be coming back a little bit later on Merlin DeFango and, you know, doing something different, but I figured we might as well let this one end up while Marcus is out there hitting the beats on his sheet. This is nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, Marcus Conti. There you go, thanks man. for coming on to the show and thanks for being hey, thank here you with very us, much, bro. Man. It's really it was really it was a lot of fun, man. I appreciate talking to you. It's uh I appreciate the uh you know the, the uh for whatever reason, I hope it's helpful, you know. I mean I hope I hope I'm again I'm the mirror, you know, bounce it off me. No, I think it's helpful. I think just everything that we talked about is definitely getting us into a better place and Honestly, I can't can't thank you enough. So with that, I I'll see you later, man. All right, very cool. What do I do? Just shut the window down, right? Just hit the hit the box. Hit, hit the, the box, up. and you're good to go, bro. Peace Thanks out, homie. Later. Peace. Woo! All right, folks. Well, that was a pretty good interview. Got to throw some shout outs. Thanks to Jazzy Joe for the lemon. Thanks to Cheesers TV for the five ice creams. Thanks to Lurcher for the diamond. And thanks to Lady K for the lemon. Thank you, everybody else that donated and put everything else out there. I think that was a very, very good show with Mr. Marcus Cunty. I know we were talking shit to each other back and forth and stuff. But... He's not a sheeple. I think he realizes very clearly what's going on here. And, you know, it's crazy to me that a guy like Marcus Conti 
where the guy he's a guy with the head on his shoulders that understands what's really happening in these situations and i just find it crazy that guys like dave acton and you know even jason goodman still don't quite see the picture that we're dealing with and i mean it's no fault to them really i mean it's just it is what it is this is the this is what we do in this life and i mean like i said i gotta give a lot of respect to marcus conti for coming out here after i called miguel Harper. i mean you know like jokes are jokes folks but it's still funny to see how far you can go and i mean i look forward to having him back on the show or you know at least watching what he's saying about this stuff because i think he does have a good unadulterated understanding of what's happening with a lot of these uh larps that we've been dealing with but at the same time i think we got to be a little bit I think we got to be a little bit more forward with what we're doing. So like I said, uh, much love to everybody out here. We'll be coming back probably like 30 minutes after I eat a hamburger uh, over on Merlin DeFango. We'll be back on the channels here in a little bit. I'm just going to let this one, uh, you know, process itself up and see what else is going out there. So much love to J-Man Resurrection, Jules Verne, Corey Corey, Equalize, Jacob Watson, Lee Veltman, the Majestic Angel, the Shadow Broker, Co Colonel Ruby Dimples Mancha, Sewer Guy Rob Jacob Watson, Lee Veltman, I already said your name, Cherie, Rebel Lemmy, Lou Ann, Bryant Messina. God dang, there's a lot of you out there right now. There's a lot of you out there. Thank you so much for joining us today over on the channel, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.